Okay, hello, this is Dr. Janes, and today we're going to use the uh, Radicode uh, gamma ray spectrometer that I got from Russia to uh, measure some uranium samples. Here's some yellow cake that I have, a little vial of it, and uh, check the calibrations, look at some um, charts of nucleides and gamma ray spectrum and that type of thing, and we'll see if we uh, uh, believe what we're seeing here. See, uh, see if the uh, well, basically, I'm going to look at the calibration of this device. Very cool. Let's get started. Okay, okay so I needed to uh, move my uh, measurement to someplace far away from my other sources because this thing is very sensitive. This is our uh, gamma ray spectrometer. And here's uh, some yellow cake uranium. And uh, let's let's take a look at the spectrum here. I've been running this for about a almost a week now. Okay. So there's U238, 235 decay chain. Possibly another peak there. U2, the, U235, U238. Oh, very cool, huh? Um, I'm not really seeing the peak there, but if there was, it would be, uh, Radium-226, radon-222, which is in the decay chain of uranium. Hmm. So these purple lines tell you where um, these peaks should be for these different different uh, isotopes. Okay. And again, the calibration might be a little bit off, so it might have to be recalibrated because they're just doing a, a linear um, interpolation. Okay, so the peak there would be for thorium. So these purple lines show you where the peaks should be for these different isotopes that are in its um, uh, data uh, uh, ooh, in its memory. It's uh, data tables, I guess. Okay. And there is a calibration that they use. I, I imagine the different crystals might have different calibrations. So you might have to, uh, they may not be calibrated exactly, so you may have to go through and do your own calibration. Okay. Of course, this stuff down here could be in the noise because let's let's uh you can pinch this screen so that see this is uh possibly noisy down here, but it does look like there are peaks there in, in this uh envelope here, and uh so I'm gonna have to let this run a little bit longer, but very cool, huh. Okay, so we'll click on the icon. And we are connected, and here's our uranium spectrum after about a week. And um, I found out, I've been using, there's a couple bars at the bottom, there's an amplify bar. And I think what it does is it kind of, the spectrum's got kind of a slope to it, so, so here it's all the way off. I bring it all the way up. Let's see if I can grab it. Okay, so there we can see some lines and if you click on the screen let's we can zoom in by doing the two finger expand thing so there is some lines here so this this first peak is not in the um, the library because these are actually if you look at the uh, K shell transitions there's three K shells between 90 and 100 and I'm going to have to see if I can change the resolution of this guy because these bins are about 10 keV wide. So you can see that's peak at 95. So th this is basically three lines under there from the K-shell transition. Okay, so this one says it's uranium uh, 238, 235 decay chain. And I'm going to have to see which uh, gamma ray and isotope that is. I'll have to look at the charts. So there's one there. And then there's two peaks here, which it also identifies as 
uranium uh, decay chain. See if I can click on the other one. So these these are in the library, but they don't tell you which isotope or transition it is. And then uh, I think that's about it. There's some other peaks down here. It says potassium 40, but as far as I know, I don't think there's any potassium in there. I may have to do a background and subtract it from that. But this is my first run. I think there's some radium, possible radium peaks down here. Now this is on the log scale, so we can look at it linear scale as well. Yeah, that's what linear scale looks like. And, uh, oh, okay, let's put it back on log. So there's, there's a, a second feature here called filter. <clears throat> and I think it's just like a smoothing function. And I think it looks a little bit better there. I'll probably save the data unfiltered, but if you keep on bringing up the filter function, it really makes, you know, it wipes out the first peak up here, basically. It smooths it out. You can see that there's some other peaks here, but kind of smooths it a little bit too much if you bring that up too much. So the filter, I believe, is some kind of smoothing function. And so I might let this run a little bit longer, but I think we can definitely see some peaks here that are associated with uh, uranium. Although I, I did have another uh, x-ray spectrometer, which I really liked. I broke it and haven't had the resources to fix it yet. But uh, it could see way down here at the bottom part, which you can identify elements from their K-shell transitions. But um, this one, the peaks seem to be kind of wide here. So I think even if I zoomed in with uh, putting more bins in there, if it's possible, I don't know, I'm going to see that maybe I wouldn't be able to see um, the x-ray transitions anyway because maybe the spectrum from the scintillator is too broad. <clears throat> anyway, very cool, huh? So here's our uranium spectrum. Okay. Okay, so now I'm running a background in the same spot, but I remove my radiation source. And I'm going to run it for the same amount of time, which uh, I ran my uranium for eight days. So um, we'll run this for probably eight days. And uh, then we can subtract off the background and we can see the peaks better. Okay. Then I brought it down here because it's away from all my other sources because this thing is very sensitive. I don't want it to have interference from the other sources. Okay, so I've been running my spectrum for about the same amount of time as I ran my uh, uranium sample. And let's save this to the library. And I want to set the current one as the background. And we'll call this BKGMD8D. Okay, and so we'll save that. And that is our background now. And, uh, oops, let's just go to our library. Okay, so it saves it as a different color. Very interesting. That's 8 days and 13 hours, and our uranium is at the bottom was 8 days and almost 11 hours. Okay. Upload the view. Okay, very interesting. I guess it shows the background under our sample. See what I like to have it on log scale. Okay. So a lot of this stuff in here was uh I'll have to look at this on a spreadsheet maybe and subtract it out. So it looks like most of this upper stuff cancels out. Okay, so Anyway, there's our data. Now I'll just, I guess I'll have to export that. And um, 
Take a look at that on a spreadsheet. Very cool, huh? Okay, so here's the website where I got um, the x-ray data for the K-shell transitions and elements. And if we go down to the bottom, here we have uranium. And see there's uh, three K-shell transitions there. One at 98.4 uh, kilo electron volts, one at 94.6 kilo electron volts, and one at 111.3 kilo electron volts. Because these are all in electron volts. Okay. This is one way to identify elements. Very cool, huh? Okay, so I exported uh, both the uranium spectrum and uh, the background, and I subtracted them. I put them in different columns and subtracted them, and then I took the log of them, and I wanted to plot it on a log scale. And it appears to me that there is one, two, possibly three, four. These, these two peaks are very low, and of course this is noise up here, so you can't really tell too much from that. Zooming in on these peaks, and uh, I just have this plotted in bins. I converted it over to frequency over here, I believe, so let's take a look at these plots over here. So I plotted them in, in linear over here, and uh, I zoomed in in some regions where I think that there's two other peaks possibly here and here. And uh, so what I did is I put stars next to them and I noted the frequency. Here's the frequency that uh, the spectrometer read, so 127. And I put uh, the frequency that the uh, where I think this peak should have been. So I think this first peak, this big one here, is there's several x-ray peaks around 100, 110 uh, keV and um, so I think that this frequency shifted a little bit that's that's a common thing as spectrometers they kind of do a calibration but they may not have done the best calibration and so I took the frequency that I think that's supposed to be and divided it by the frequency that's on the spectrometer and I got this number so it's it's about 86 percent of the value and I tried to do that with some of the other peaks and see if it comes up with about the same shift because if it's all the same then you can just put this new factor in there and shift all the peaks to where you think they should be or just take that into account that it's 80 some percent off so the next peak uh, is uh, according to the spectrometer I didn't look it up but they claim that it's uh, U235 and they claim that 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 energy should be at 192 kilovolts and I measured that peak at about one, uh, 232, and again, that's about 82% of the value. So it's a very similar, very similar uh, type of shift. And there was two other peaks that were very low. Remember, we were looking at those up here. They'd be in this region, or um, well, let's see, these are the higher frequency ones. You can kind of see them here on the log plot. It looks like there's two bumps here. But there's a lot of noise there, so the signal to noise isn't great. But um, the spectrometer claims that there is a, a gamma rays from PA234, and uh, they're claiming that that should be at 750. And I measured it on the spectrometer to be 824. And again, if you take the ratio of those two, it's 91, which is very much in the ballpark of the other two. And again, here's another PA234 peak, and it's supposed to be at 1,001. And uh, the spectrometer measured it at 1,127, which is about 0.8888% of the uh, actual value. And so if I average those four, I get a offset of about 0.87 or 87%. So I can uh, just multiply by the inverse of that, or just multiply by that, multiply it, take this number and multiply it by our uh, frequency numbers, and that will shift it down to where I think 
the uh, the actual calibration should be. So I think I think we're seeing uh, something useful here. We can get some kind of useful spectrum. Of course, the the X-rays <clears throat> there's not a high enough resolution here to uh, actually look at the X-ray lines, so that's not super useful there. But uh, the gamma ray ones, you see the peaks are very broad here. These these gamma ray lines can be used to identify what an unknown is. Okay. And so I'm going to be running some more samples and we'll see how that turns out. It should be very interesting. Okay. Anyway. Oh yes, uh, PA234 is in the decay chain of uranium-238. And so as uranium decays, it's going to have uh, this daughter uh, ice products in there given off radiation too. So that would help identify uranium. So even though it's not uranium, it's uh, a daughter product of uranium. It's created by uranium as it decays. Okay, so that's why it's in that uh, uh, chain to help identify where, whether we have uranium or not. Okay. Okay, so here is the chart of nucleides. And uh, on this axis is plotted a uh, number of neutrons, and this is number of protons. So this shows all the different isotopes in the world. And you can kind of move around using this arrow keys here. And here's where the address is. So in order to scroll in, I can use the control and the mouse wheel here. And let's scroll in, and we want to look at uranium. Okay. And I have uranium actually already highlighted. So that's why it's red. Whatever you click on, it's, it's, it's highlighted. So... The main isotope of uranium, I see you can tell that the neutrons are in this direction because it's all uranium going across here, and it's different elements going up and down, so the number of protons determine what kind of element it is, so actinium, thorium, uh, I forget what PA is, uranium, neptunium, plutonium. Okay, so the main isotope of uranium is 238, and you can hover over it and it will tell you like half-life, what kind of decay it has. Of course there's 235 also and it, I believe it tells the percentage as well and it's like less than a percent U-235. U-235 is fissile of course but the majority of our sample will be uranium-238. So let's click on that guy. And uh, so the way this guy decays is alpha decay. See it tells you alpha Great. Okay, here we go. Alpha decay and the energy of the alpha. So an alpha decay moves on the chart diagonally down to like that. So it become thorium uh, 234. And if you look at that one, that's going to beta decay. Beta decay is going to stay at the same um, nucleus mass. So it'll move diagonally up like that. So it'll go to PA-234, and that one will beta decay to, uh, well, th this, is, this is the isotope that we're concerned about, because uh, our uh, spectrometer is telling us that this is a very active isotope with gamma rays. So if we click on that, you can go down here, and they have different gamma rays that it will give off. And you can look at the energies. You also have a tab called decay radiation. And uh, here's the gamma ray chart. And it has lots of gamma ray energies. And then I'll tell you the probability of getting the gamma ray. And uh, the energy of the gamma rays. And I believe the one we had was 101. I don't know, I'd have to look through this chart. And see, you want a high probability and, oh, this is the initial and final, so you got to have the delta of that. Okay, so this is the delta energy. See, it has different uh, energy levels here. Let's see if we can go over here and take a look at this. And here's the different energy levels of our transitions in the nucleus. And it goes from one energy level to another, because that's how quantum works, quantum mechanics. 
And anyway, so we can look at the gamma rays. I would, I'm just assuming that the uh, spectrometer was correct. Oh, look at that. Beta ray energies. <clears throat> Very cool. Anyway, oh, come on. So, anyway, so going through the decay chain. So here's one of the isotopes that we're looking at. And then, uh, of course, if you see how it decays, it will be beta decay. So it will go up to U234, which I believe has a relatively short half-life. The half-life is only 10 to the 5 years. See that right there, the half-life right there. 10 to the 5 years. And that one is going to alpha decay. So it will go diagonally down to like that, so thorium-230. And then that one's going to alpha decay. See, it's an alpha right there. And that's where you get to our friend radium-226. And I think I'll stop the decay chain there. Yeah, I'll go from radium to radon, because another alpha decay. And then another alpha decay, to, well, to polonium-218. And then you can just follow this on down. Looks like another alpha decay to lead uh, 214, beta decay to bismuth 214, uh, yeah, 214. Uh, let's see, and so that's another beta decay to polonium 214, and an alpha decay to lead 210, which is a pretty famous uh, radioisotope. I believe it has a pretty long half life. Let's see, where's the half life? No, it doesn't. It has a short half-life. 22 years. Does that mean it's going to be pretty radioactive? The shorter the half-life, the more radioactive it is. And so that's a uh, very low probability of alpha decay, but it's possible. See, it has the probability of alpha decay, mainly beta decay. It has different energies. And so beta decay would be Bismuth 210 and another beta decay, polonium 210, and that is a famous alpha emitter. Okay, and that of course decays from alpha to lead 206 where it's stable. Okay, so there it is the uh, radio decay chain of radioisotope decay chain of uranium. 238 and U235 is going to be in there also but it's going to uh, be much lower its, it's isotope content is very low let's see if I can see where that is on here 235 abundance right there it's only 0.7 percent of the uranium makeup where Uranium-235 is 99%. Okay, so that's the main isotope in our sample, probably. Because I probably didn't get a uh, sample that's pure U-235. They don't sell that type of stuff to the public. <laughs> anyway, very cool, huh? Hope you find this uh, information on the gamma ray spectrometer interesting. This is uh, Dr. James, and thanks for watching.